The America East season is headed for the final stretch. And today at Laval Stadium, it is another pivotal conference clash. For the second time this season, first place Stony Brook meets third place UMBC, which has two games remaining in the regular season. Thanks for joining us from high atop Turfside. I'm Johnny Wintgott. Stony Brook still the only team in conference to punch their ticket to the AE Big Dance. Six wins and one loss. That lone loss, though, to the UMBC Retrievers. Now the Retrievers have an opportunity to become the second team to clinch their spot in the America East postseason as we take a peek at the AE standings. A win today by the Retrievers or a Binghamton Bearcats loss puts Ryan Moran's club into the Final Four. Stony Brook, Vermont, UMBC, and U Albany sitting atop those final four spots at the moment. Vermont can also clinch today with a win, as can U Albany. They'll play at noon against NJIT. The Retrievers fresh off a bounce back win on Senior Day 12 7 last week against UMass Lowell, a four point effort from their leading scorer, Nick Dupuy. We'll spotlight the Retriever that has scored a goal in each and every game this season. Stony Brook knows him well, had a hat trick the first time they met in the four overtime effort. He had the game winner on the man up to give the Retrievers their 13 to 12 win. Stony Brook, meanwhile, hasn't lost since that March 6th effort. Mike McCannell will be our Seawolf spotlight today, fitting for the senior who received some ceremonies today pregame. Six points against NJIT, a career high. Followed that up with six points against Binghamton. He's got 11 goals and 9 assists during Stony Brook's six-game winning streak. Today will be his 56th career appearance, and he was honored by the conference midweek as the America East Player of the Week. And McCannell ready for this game, said midweek, a huge game for us. We want that game back, that first game. We're going to be coming out with a lot of energy. This is an important game, and we want a little redemption. Stony Brook will have their chance at redemption. They'll take on UMBC in the penultimate game of the AE regular season. First face-off comes next from Laval Stadium on LAC Sports Network. Anthony Gallardi trying to get his Stony Brook Seawolves set for the UMBC Retrievers, 13-5 in his first full season with Stony Brook. And Anthony Gallardi is the first team to clinch their spot in the AE postseason. He may have some others with him by the end of today, but after spending eight seasons at Towson, it's a shortened 2020 season for Anthony Gallardi. And after losing his opening conference game against UMBC about a month and a half ago, longest game in Stony Brook's Division I history, four overtimes, the team has not lost. Well, today they'll take on that team, the Retrievers, who are spearheaded in his fifth season by Ryan Moran. And a Long Islander back at home is Father Jack, longtime coach at Chaminade, where Ryan went as well. Said he'll get to check back at Seaport Delhi. Grew up just a few minutes away from the campus here at Stony Brook University. And now an opportunity with a win today for the Retrievers to punch their ticket to the 2021 America East playoffs. Retrievers could still get to the playoffs with a loss today. They would need a win from Vermont over Binghamton. As we peer at the Retrievers starting lineup, Ryan Moran said it's been a different starting attack each and every game since we beat Binghamton in early March. We've been dealing with the various challenges and protocols, but we are healthy and ready to go. We spotlighted Nick Dupuy in our broadcast open. Shouldn't overlook number four, Brett McIntyre, who had four goals against Stony Brook earlier in the season and had a hat trick, three goals on three shots on goal last week against UMass Lowell. And if it ain't broken, don't fix it for Anthony Gallardi's group. Same looking starting lineup as Austin Deskowitz lines up with Alex Poma, junior and a sophomore, as we get you ready for the face-off X. First place Stony Brook, third place UMBC. We are off and running at Laval Stadium. Easy win by Austin Deskowitz. Face-off and get off. And Stony Brook, the 17th ranked team of the country, or 14th ranked team of the country, depending on where you look, will set up their high-powered offense. Nearly 16 goals per game, that's good for sixth best in the country. Last time these two teams met on March 6th, we noted four overtimes. Longest game in Stony Brook's Division I history. First shot, Mike McCannell. And on senior day, he misses on the far side. McCannell, one of 13 Seawolves honored prior to the first face-off. Stony Brook, class act as well, honoring, or at least recognizing the Retrievers seniors. Tom Hahn, 
Yep. Could not get the shot off, and the Retrievers will attempt their first clear. We noted five and two in the America East. Only played one non-conference game. They won it, and of course did it in overtime. That's the Retrievers for you. An 8-7 victory against Mount St. Mary's. So that puts them at six and two overall. But with two weeks remaining in the America East season, the only record that matters right now is your conference mark. Retrievers, meanwhile, scoring fewer than 10 goals per game. But their defense has been up to the task. Fifth best in the country. They have not scored more than 13 goals in any game this season, but they did score 13 against Stony Brook back on March 6th. Grinding away, first shot, nowhere near. That was Trevor Pachorki, the senior, who was the most valuable player of the most recent America East tournament. Got to go back to 2019 after last year's COVID-shortened 2020 campaign. Retrievers searching for a lane, shot goes wide. Brandon Galloway the take, backed up with 14 on the shot clock. Pachorki shoots and it's in. Trevor Pachorki, less than two minutes into the first quarter and the Retrievers have the lead. 10th goal of the season for the senior from Maryland. He did not play in UMBC's win over Vermont earlier in the season. In a 10-8 final, Trevor Petrorki unassisted has the first tally today at Laval Stadium. Important for the Retrievers to get off to a good start, especially offensively. Did not have the lead until late third quarter in that first meeting a month and a half ago. Stony Brook two for two in the faceoff X. Safely in the cross of Tom Hahn. Now to Dylan Palinetti. The leading scorer in the America East. But he is only a freshman, not honored in the pregame ceremonies today at Laval Stadium. Although most of the guys surrounding him were, that includes Hahn at X, who goes back to Palinetti. 30 seconds have elapsed off the Stony Brook, off the Stony Brook shot clock. This is Connor Grippy, another senior. He's got a lane, bounce pass intended for Vangenhoven. This will go out of bounds and the Retrievers take over. Two possessions, nothing to show for it for Stony Brook. Flag flies on the near side despite play on going on the far side. This will be against Stony Brook. Play continues in the UMBC attacking third. Retrievers, depending on which polls you look at during the week, receive votes. The top four America East teams in the standings all appeared in the polls this week. And again, depending on where you look, that depends on their position, but Stony Brook, Vermont, UMBC, and UAlbany. A competitive America East Conference this season. Pajorki already with a goal. Yadek sends it to the top shot, goal. Ryan Frawley. The senior captain makes it 2 nothing. Tenth goal of the season for number 34 in black and gold. And the first two tallies are owned by Ryan Moran's group. For Frawley, that's now a point in 34 consecutive games. Dating back to the 2019 season, which was a good one for him. First team All-America East. In fact, the first retriever attack to garner that award since 2014. Meanwhile, the Seawolves, swift at the faceoff X, still with Deskowitz, who's three for three. That was a point of emphasis in chatting with Ryan Moran, UMBC's head coach heading into this game. Said, we know Stony Brook's gotten a lot better at the center circle as the season's progressed. He said he thinks it's about 70% since they played us on March the 6th. Third opportunity for the Seawolves offense, four plus minutes in. A two to nothing Retrievers lead in a big time conference clash. Retrievers win, they guarantee themselves a spot in the four team America East playoffs. 
Seeds are all up for grabs. Stony Brook, the only team at the start of the weekend to punch their ticket to the conference dance. Patrick Hashchalk. Hampered on the near side, deposits at X. This is Hahn. 30 seconds to work with for Anthony Collardi's unit. McCannell off a career high six point game, finds space, shoots it, saved. Tommy Lingner is up to the task on his first shot of the day. Comes nearly five minutes into the first quarter and an opportunity for the Retrievers to extend the lead to three. The game on March 6th, which finished 13-12 in favor of the Retrievers, featured six ties, the longest game in Stony Brook's Division I history, and it was Anthony Gallardi's first America East game. How's that for a welcome to the conference? He has not lost since. Stony Brook in the midst of a six game winning streak. Their longest since 2011. Retrievers threatening again, Pachorki. On the near side, dealing with Dugan, one of Stony Brook's defensive captains. Goes across the way, counterclockwise, still the Retrievers. 25 seconds to operate as Frawley jumps to make the catch. This is Dupuy. Retrievers leading scorer yet to find the score sheet. Shot clock dwindles down to 15. Dupuy puts on the moves. Interior feed, the shot is stopped by Palma. Tough angle from Frawley, but from point blank range. Anthony Palma able to maintain the two goal deficit. And now the fourth try for the Stony Brook offense. Seawolves haven't seemed to struggle to get into the offensive zone. Could thank Austin Deskowitz for a lot of that. Here's Vagenhoven. But once in the zone, credit the Retrievers for really limiting the Stony Brook options so far. Dylan Palanetti is the America East points leader, but he only had one of Stony Brook's 22 goals last week against Binghamton. Connor Grippy, angling towards the net, had his pass batted out of the air. This one rolls all the way to the far sideline. Stony Brook recovers. Do so in the form of Matt DeMeo. DeMeo spins left, crosses over, shoots, and scores. For the ninth straight game, Matt DeMeo's got a goal. And it's the first of the afternoon for Stony Brook. They have the deficit 2-1. It's an unassisted goal for the grad student from Sayville. We noted nine consecutive games with a goal. He's got one at 11 of 12 this season. Another swift face-off win for Austin Deskowitz. He checks in at 17th in the country in terms of face-off percentage at the start of the weekend. Just a tick under 60%. By the way, Alex Poma for the Retrievers, also ranked in the top 25 in the country. Opportunity to tie, the shot goes just over the net. Matt Anderson looking top left corner. Corey Vangenhoven on the restart. Spin dodge left being hampered by Diallo, shot shut down by Langner and bounces into the cross of the aforementioned Diallo. Couple of good opportunities for Stony Brook. Lingner, who has the top goals against average in the conference at eight and a half, and has been up to the task so far halfway through the first quarter. NJIT in the capital to take on Albany. At 1 p.m., UVM in Vestal to take on Binghamton. And the eight-team America East Conference, half of those teams will make it to the postseason. UMBC, the winners of the most recent America East tournament, got to go back to 2019. Did so by upsetting the number one seed, Stony Brook, right here at Laval Stadium. A 
chance to send Stony Brook to their second conference loss today, both via the Retrievers. 20 on the timer, comes to Pichorki on the near side. Ten seconds. Retrievers got to get to work. Inside the crease, low shot. Palma kept it out. A right boot save by Stony Brook's netminder. And this stays at a one-goal game. Danny Cassidy sends it across the turf. Cassidy, one of many honored, as noted, for the senior day festivities. Had some parents and families record messages for their student athletes. Stony Brook swiftly back into the offensive third again. Danny Cassidy's parents said, Tohoka Nanticoat's worst nightmare. Well, he was a few weeks ago. And Stony Brook's big time win over U Albany. That was just the third win during a streak for Stony Brook. A streak that is extended to six consecutive games. Chris Pickell off the screen. With speed, Pickell altered from behind. Great defensive play by Colin Kasner. And well fitting, he's the America East Defensive Player of the Week. The senior from Maryland, pickering, picking up that honor for the first time this year. Vangenhoven shut down on the near side. Teddy Lingner's done it again. And the Retrievers jet into the offensive third. Kyle Huff hands off Galloway. Galloway rips one and scores. Brendan Galloway extends the lead. 3-1 Retrievers with under five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Twelfth goal of the season for Galloway, who last year in the shortened season transitioned from a face-off specialist to an offensive midi. And boy, has that paid off. 4.56 remaining, first quarter. Time out of the turf, we'll take it with them. Retrievers three, Seawolves one. We are just getting started at Laval Stadium. Stony Brook Lacrosse, T-Mobile, and Brian Lacrosse have partnered to launch Lax Cares, a new grant program aimed at providing underprivileged or up-and-coming lacrosse programs with equipment. It's open to all youth lacrosse programs on Long Island. Selected organizations will receive $2,500 worth of gear from Brian. From now until May 8th, visit stonybrookathletics.com slash laxcares to nominate your lacrosse team. UMBC three, Stony Brook one, the second to last regular season week in the America East season. And still a lot on the line as Austin Deskowitz back in his office. His fourth faceoff win of the opening quarter. And we'll see if Stony Brook could take advantage. Offense off to a slow start. Tip your cap to the Retrievers defense for trying to make this unit, which scores over 15 goals per game, just a little bit uncomfortable. Dylan Palanetti looking for a lane. Palanetti misses the net. Backed up by Tom Hahn. Nine Stony Brook shots, only four on goal so far. 50 on the timer. Plenty to work with. Opportunity here, and it squeaks in. Corey Vangenhoven from X to Twine. It just barely snuck through Tommy Langner, and it's back to a one-goal game. This will be the 21st tally of the season for Vangenhoven. Fourth best in the conference. And a quick release. Got a piece of Langner. Many of the shots do, the talented netminder. UMBC three, Stony Brook two, and whatever Anthony Gallardi said during the timeout appears to have worked. UMBC tried to go with Zach Dudley at the face-off X. But Stony Brook still finding success. Austin Deskowitz the win. In fact, right now, according to our in-game statistics, Stony Brook 6 of 6. That'll provide them with another opportunity at goal. This one would be to tie the game at 3. Palinetti yet to find the score sheet. 
Curls out on the far side. Stony Brook resets with Connor Grippy. Hahn. Hampered by Diallo. Hahn 20 yards out, deposits into the stick of Pickell. Pickell cradling along the left. Takes two, maybe three whacks. Still Pickell turns and shoots. Tough angle shot will roll wide. It'll be backed up by Corey Vangenhoven, the most recent Stony Brook goal scorer. We noted retrievers never led the first time these two teams met until late third quarter. Stony Brook yet to lead in this one. And after the first two tallies came from the retrievers, Grippy drew a, drew a brief double team. Hahn bridges the gap to Palinetti. With space, Dylan shoots and scores. His league leading 29th goal of the season. And Dylan Palinetti has tied the game in the first quarter. Well, you figured it wouldn't be long before Palinetti found the score sheet, either with a goal or with a helper. Three minutes and nine seconds remain in this first quarter. And we start anew three and three with the first tie of this game. I told you we had six ties the last time these teams met. Take a peek at all the stuff that Dylan Palinetti has done this season. Nine consecutive multi-goal games. He has scored in each and every game this year. The freshman's first year with Stony Brook. Stony Brook goal After a campaign at Maryland. Stony Brook now seven of seven at the faceoff X. And they're back into the attacking third. Both coaches talked about the importance of winning those faceoffs. Palinetti avoids a defender. And even if we're not scoring directly off the faceoff, if we're possessing, they're not scoring. Cheeky take by Palinetti. Bounce shot, destined upper left 90. I think Lingner got a piece of it. Stony Brook on the restart. 40 plus seconds remaining on the shot clock. Matt Anderson. Can't find the angle. Still Anderson. Off for Palinetti. Tiptoeing along the near side. Palinetti cuts in front and scores. It's back to back tallies for Dylan Palinetti. And Stony Brook goes in front for the first time today. Now multi goal games in 10 in a row. The freshman who plays anything like a freshman. He's able to squeak it between the wickets of Lingner. Palinetti creating a good angle for himself just outside the crease. His league leading 47th point of the season. Entering the day, Stony Brook owns the top three point scorers in the America East. And for the first time today, UMBC will take seven, possession off the faceoff. Scored by number 34, Dylan Palinetti. The goal is unassisted. Palinetti's second goal announced as an unassisted tally. A 4-3 contest, just over two minutes remaining, and the Retrievers may have just committed a costly turnover. Battle on for the ball, and the Retrievers emerge. Corey Gaines with a long stick. All right, no harm done for Ryan Moran's group. Deep breath, 65 seconds on the shot clock. 105 seconds on the game clock. And a whistle will stop play as Anthony Gallardi chatting with the umpire on the nearest side. Mike McCloskey is our referee today. Alfred Pugh, the umpire. And James Vignona, the field judge. The holy triumvirate in black and white get together briefly. We resume final 100 seconds. First quarter, Laval Stadium. We noted round two in the regular season between the Retrievers and Seawolves. First time that they've ever met twice in a regular season. Retrievers looking for a response after three straight by the Seawolves. 
Ball is loose in front of the net, and we've got another battle. Jimmy Morrell looks to be the first one there. It's flung up in the air. Off of Stony Brook, UMBC possesses. Now only 28 seconds to go on the shot clock. McIntyre, spin dodge left. The Retrievers bench lets their offense know, 20 seconds remaining. Interior feed did not get there. Anthony Palmo wound up with it, but we'll have a late flag. And the penalty will be on Danny Cassidy. 50.5 ticks remaining in the first quarter. And Danny Cassidy laid the thunder, as he's known to do a time or two. Called a cross check to the head. And for the first time today, a man advantage. A one minute cross checking penalty has been assessed to number 99 of Stony Brook, Danny Cassidy. Retrievers operating at about 70% this season on the man up. Scored their game winning goal against Stony Brook in the fourth overtime from Nick Dupuy on the man up. Stony Brook, meanwhile, third best man down clip in the country. The quarter theoretically could end before the penalty does. 25 seconds in the first, 35 remaining on the minor. Everything at the perimeter right now for the Retrievers. 15 seconds to go. Dupuy with 10, sends it turf side, winds, fires, it's off the post. Rings all the way to the Stony Brook sideline. And much to the chagrin of all the Seawolves on the sideline, including their head coach, Anthony Collardi, it's Retriever's ball. They've got three seconds, and they will let this clock run out. One goal game at the end of 15, just about what we all expected. Stony Brook in first place in the America East. UMBC just a game behind. We'll have the second quarter coming up next for you on LAC Sports Network. Stony Brook. Because we're extending the deadline for you to be that ultimate Seawolves fan. We appreciate all our fans tuning in today. If you can't be here in person. 4-3 contest, UMBC has tied it. 13 seconds into the second quarter. It's a man advantage goal for the Retrievers and we start a new 4-4. Looked like number four, making it a 4-4 game. That'd be Brett McIntyre, who had four goals against Stony Brook the last time they met, back on March the 6th. And if you're just joining us, first time that these two teams have met twice in a regular season. Deskowitz v. Poma. Deskowitz is right on top of it again. He won the first six face-offs in the first quarter, and for a while, not necessarily translating to goals for Stony Brook. Three out of the first four were owned by the Retrievers, but then three consecutive by Stony Brook until that McIntyre tally right there. UMBC men up goal was scored by number so now UMBC six, goal Dupuis. from number six, Nick Dupuy. Dupuis. The team's leading scorer continues his streak, a goal in every game this season. DeMeo winds. And fires wide on the near side. He was running near side to far, but fired across his body far side to near. Either way, Stony Brook backs it up. Here's Vangenhoven. Our second tie of this first half. Wayne White lets one loose. Another one that goes wide and backed up by UMBC. Good hustle by Ricky for Dorchak. Looked like he beat Tom Hahn in a foot race into the corner. And that allows the Retrievers to possess. 25th all-time meeting between these two teams. UMBC owns it 14 to 10, and they've won back-to-back -back games. Back-to-back -back relatively big-time games. We noted March 6th earlier this year, took four overtimes. Longest game in Stony Brook's D1 era. In 2019, the time prior, it was an America East playoff game. The one Stony Brook against the four UMBC right here at Laval Stadium. Retrievers would win that game 
win the conference tournament and win an NCAA tournament game as well. They would beat Marist before losing to Penn State. Retrievers threatening again. Good pass in front goes over McIntyre. Behind the back effort by Dupuy. Palma the diving effort. Stony Brook closest to it. We are only two plus minutes into the second quarter and some unbelievable individual efforts from both of these teams. David Mili Estrella able to navigate through traffic. Still in the neutral zone, Stony Brook moments away as they enter the attacking third in the form of Matt Anderson. Noted the Seawolves have won six games in a row, longest win streak in 10 years. Scored a season high 22 against Binghamton last Saturday. Hadn't scored that many goals since 2017. Got to go back to February 2017. They scored 25 against Brown. Pearson tried to deposit for McCannell. Colin Kastner got in the way. They continue to battle. Kastner goes down. And the ball finally scooped up by the Retrievers. It's Talon Campbell, who Houdini's the sideline, and he's into the offensive zone. Another great effort by a Retriever. And UMBC a chance to take the lead here in the second quarter. Dupuy had a little hop in his step. Galloway centrally located. Blows by Dugan. Blows the shot over the crossbar. No harm done though for the Retrievers. Taylor Bohannon, the junior from Maryland, backs it up. Dupuy, blanketed by Caleb Pearson. Dupuy fell down, quickly back to his feet. Galloway again, centrally located. Time dwindling here on the Retrievers. Less than 20 seconds on the shot clock. Still Galloway. Deposits at X. Dupuy out in front. McIntyre can't get the shot off, but a flag flies. Play continues. The penalty on Stony Brook. Five seconds. McIntyre. Did he get it in? Palma's down. No signal yet. They signal for the penalty on Stony Brook. Will they give the Retrievers a goal? Another peek at it. You saw Dupuy put his hands up. But I don't think that ball ever crossed the line. And it did not. Hockey style, Palma went down, made sure his back was on the ball. But also made sure it didn't cross the line. So we stay at a 4-4 game, but UMBC who we'll open the quarter with a man up goal. Go right back to the advantage. Galloway, no go. Palma got a piece of it. Out of bounds, UMBC retains, and that will leave a mark tomorrow on Anthony Palma's upper body. 10 seconds remaining on the advantage. Shot, it's another save by Palma. Galloway stone cold again. Back to neutral strength. Retrievers still threatening though, five minutes into the second quarter. The six and one Seawolves, first place in the America East. The five and two Retrievers, currently in third, but just a game back of Stony Brook. The two teams on top of the Retrievers in the standings, each have one loss, each at the hands of the Retrievers, that'd be Stony Brook and Vermont. Good feed by Dupuy, and Galloway flubbed it. Amelia Estrella provided the pressure. The long possession lives on for the Retrievers. 50 seconds on the shot clock, Dupuy. Spinning on Morell, picked up now by Cassidy. Cassidy, the guilty party at the end of the first quarter, which helped aid the Retrievers in their early second quarter man advantage goal. Frawley, with one goal today, Lolly pops it back to the 30 yard line. Galloway. Scrambling defense by Stony Brook. Ball on the turf. 
Picked up by the Retrievers. The shot is caught by Palma. Right into the breadbasket. Dane Hall this time is shut down by Palma. And with nine minutes to go in the second quarter, Stony Brook can breathe a big sigh of relief after killing off the penalty. Liam Ronan puts his head down and brings it into the offensive third. And receives kudos from the Stony Brook bench. So first time in seemingly a long time for Stony Brook. They will set up shop on the left side of Laval Stadium. Vangenhoven. Stony Brook searching for the right angles. Matt DeMeo fires high and wide, backed up by SBU. You're getting a look at Tom Hahn. One of eight Seawolves ever with at least 100 points. DeMeo quickly across the way, Piquel. Piquel could not pull the trigger, well defended on the near side. Final 10 seconds for Stony Brook. Shot clock winding down, DeMeo no go. Rebound shot, it's in. Corey Vangenhoven, right place, right time. And Stony Brook goes back in front, 5-4. Cheeky effort by DeMeo, who had to get the shot off with only five seconds remaining on the timer. And Corey Vangenhoven picks up the loose ball and deposits easily for his second goal of the game. Well, last week, Stony Brook put up 22 goals against Binghamton a season high, and at points during that game, you thought, all right, not a lot of Palinetti scoring, not a lot of Vangenhoven scoring. Well, today, those two have four of Stony Brook's five. The game was scored by number 40, Corey Vangenhoven. The goal was unassisted. Another unassisted tally in this game. That gives you an indication of how good the defenses have been, unable to put together the plays that the coaches would typically want. The tic-tac-toe passing plays. I've had some disjointed possessions where you find the ball and you find the goal. And they all count the same. Pedorki. Pedorki again at X. Sends it to Doty. Mike Doty, the sophomore from Maryland, gets rid of it quickly. This is Hall again, who had his shot saved by Palma on the man advantage. Zichelli. Retriever is getting everybody involved. Pachorki was working against Milia Estrella. Comes around clockwise. Hall tiptoeing, shooting, and scoring. Steven Zichelli's got his fourth goal of the season, and this game is tied for the fourth time. UMBC five, Stony Brook five. And these two America East foes continue to trade jabs here in the first half. Steven Zichelli and his brother Michael, who is also on the team. The 33rd brother combination in UMBC men's lacrosse history. In fact, I had the pleasure of bumping into Michael earlier today up here at Laval Stadium, ran through some pronunciation, says, I know how to pronounce that UMBC Steven Zichelli kid. Whistle will hand it back to UMBC. And now the Retrievers an opportunity to jump back in front. Told you they had six ties on March the 6th and the four overtime win, 13-12 UMBC over Stony Brook. Not much has separated these two squads so far. Still plenty of lacrosse left to be played, but only six minutes here in the first half. Taylor Bohannon spins in the corner. Being watched closely by the big Danny Cassidy. Makes his 42nd Stony Brook appearance today on senior day. Final regular season game at Laval. Galloway Cox pulls and scores. Bar down. Brendan Galloway. And the lead goes back to the Retrievers.
Brendan Galloway, the second, rather the first retriever with a multi-goal game today. He's now got 13 on the season. Junior from Graysonville, Maryland, went to Kent Island High School. Three-sport athlete there, as were many of the players on the turf today. Battle on at the faceoff X. And Austin Deskowitz wins it again. Deskowitz spins past Poma, and Stony Brook sets up the offense. 6-5 retrievers over Seawolves. Just over five minutes remaining in this opening half. And the second regular season meeting of the season. Chatted with both Ryan Moran and Anthony Gallardi heading into this game. And Moran and Gallardi used to play against each other in high school, both Long Islanders. Now coaching against each other in this AE rivalry. Whistle will give the ball back to Stony Brook. Still neutral play. Patrick Katschalk on the restart. Anthony Gallardi said, when our team is fresh like they are right now, playing efficient team lacrosse, we can beat anybody. Shot was altered from behind. Matt Anderson sailed high over the cage. And Stony Brook has shown that this season. After their loss to UMBC, they haven't lost to anybody. Six in a row, Palinetti. Cradling along the right hip. Doesn't like what he sees, here's McCannell. Bridges the gap to Anderson, who jets towards the net and misses. Far side, still 48 seconds to work with for Stony Brook. With four and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Gallardi talking about his offense, says we can attack in many ways without it being too complicated internally for our guys. Palinetti. Took a bump in the back, maintains possession. Sends it across the way. McCannell, behind the cage. Tough pass, will be backed up by Vangenhoven. But while it might not seem complicated to our offense, Gallardi says, it might look a little bit more complicated to the defense. Timeout with 4.12 remaining here in the first half. Timeout. UMBC. We'll keep it right here at Laval Stadium. The Long Island General Office of New York Life is a proud sponsor of Stony Brook Athletic. To learn more about joining their winning team... And Six goals by UMBC Life, from five different goal scorers. We noted Galloway, the only multi-goal scorer. He has two as we peer at the Stony Brook Seawolves. Getting a good talking to from Anthony Gallardi, their second-year head coach. Two goals from Palinetti, two goals from Vangenhoven, and a goal by Matt DeMeo. Taking a peek back at what unfolded the first time these teams met back on March the 6th. We noted UMBC 13, Stony Brook 12. This was the first America East game coached by Anthony Gallardi. Did not get to do it during the shortened 2020 season. UMBC never led until late third quarter, but they led when it was all said and done. A man up goal in the fourth overtime by Nick Dupuy. That gave him a hat trick. Again, in the 13 12 Stony Brook loss. And that's the last time that the 17th ranked Seawolves have suffered a loss this season. Almost equally as impressive, UMBC, while they do have two losses this season, an overtime loss against Binghamton and a five goal loss against U Albany, they sit in third place. Second place is UVM. The Catamounts have one loss, that was against UMBC. First place is Stony Brook, they have one loss, that was against UMBC. And this will tie the game. The veteran Tom Hahn curls out from behind the cage and ties the game six and six. With that goal, Tom Hahn now owns sole possession of sixth place in the all-time points leaderboard, his 164th. He passes Matt Schultz. On one of many, many talented veterans on this Stony Brook roster. Austin Deskowitz, another seemingly easy win. I'm sure they never come easy at the faceoff X. Another unassisted tally by Stony Brook makes it a 6-6 game. And we are tied yet again here in the first half.
Pikel with speed, shoots, Lingner there. And the rebound right back down into Lingner. Lingner's fifth save, Palba has four. The top two minutes leaders for goaltenders in the America East. Palma at the start of the day at 644 minutes. Lingner at 502. We get a pair of flags fly on the near side. Penalty forthcoming on Stony Brook. UMBC will play on. Retrievers have already had two man up opportunities. They've made good on one of them. Where Ryan Moran will be happier already. The lack of fouls from the Retrievers. Yet to commit one today. Said, I'm not sure where it came from. We committed 12 fouls in the first seven games and then nine in our last five quarters. With 2.45 remaining first half. Officials get a chance to blow the whistle. And now the Retrievers will go on their third man advantage of this opening half. Looks like the guilty Seawolf will be Jimmy Morrell. Again, one of the 13 Seawolves honored today on Senior Day. Penalty not on Morrell, it's on Piquel. Offside penalties have been assessed to number 13 of Stony Brook, Chris Piquel Jr. It's an offsides penalty on Piquel Jr. Another Seawolf who was honored today in the pregame festivities. Shows you how many important Seawolves bring that veteran presence. Originally showing a 30 second penalty. Now they've got one minute up on the scoreboard. Prime opportunity here for the Retrievers to grab the lead back. We've been tied four times in this first half. Galloway, Frawley. Comes back to Galloway. We've Saying he's not afraid to shoot from distance. For all he's got a goal, he possesses at X. Shot, low, and in. Dane Hall has given the lead back to UMBC. And he breaks his scoreless stretch, had gone three straight games without a point. And now has the most important point so far in this game. With 2.09 to go in the first half, UMBC seven, Stony Brook six. Fifth goal of the season for Dane Hall. Sophomore for Maryland. In fact, his dad was a Division I college football player over at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. Quick whistle, this is on Deskowitz. Homa, deposits left, retrievers threatening, shot, goal! Oh my, tic-tac-toe, and Ryan Frawley the beneficiary. It's two goals in five seconds. And the Retrievers take a two goal lead. It does not get much better than that. And it all started at the X with Poma. Credit the sophomore who really struggled early in this game to win a face off. Starting the rally there and spreading the wealth. Almost everybody in the third got a touch there and did so in a span of two or three seconds. Take 15 at the face-off X. And for the 11th time, it's won by Deskowitz. Seventy seconds showing on the shot clock. About double that on the second quarter clock. That will take us to halftime. We noted earlier in the game, the Retrievers have not scored more than 13 goals in any game this season. They did score 13 against Stony Brook back on March the 6th. 
Meanwhile, the Seawolves scored a season best 22 last Saturday here at Laval Stadium. McCannell had five of those 22. Tried the left, tried the right, nothing there. Tom Hahn, Stony Brook's most recent goal. This is Caleb Pearson, who's falling to the seat of his pants and couldn't get it cleanly to McCannell. It's a turnover on Stony Brook. Third turnover on the Seawolves. And kudos to Ryan Moran's group. They've been disciplined today, no turnovers. On the run, Talon Campbell into the offensive third. And with 45.8 ticks remaining in the first half, timeout taken by Ryan Moran. Timeout, UMBC. We'll take the timeout with the Retrievers head coach. 45.8 ticks remain. The Retrievers try to make it a three goal game when we return on LAC Sports Network. Final 45 plus seconds at Laval Stadium. First half, Stony Brook and UMBC, a pivotal America East Conference clash. Playoff implications on the line. Stony Brook has already punched their ticket to the four team dance. UMBC could be right there with them with a win today at Laval Stadium. Glad you've joined us on this Saturday afternoon. Johnny Wincott high above turf side, flying solo at Laval Stadium, where the Retrievers look to hand the Seawolves their second conference loss. The first was to the Retrievers. Way back on March the 6th, the four overtime game. Neutral strength, final 40 seconds. Seawolves just before the break, able to kill off a minute long penalty. Ryan Frawley possesses on the near side. He's got two goals. Plays pass with Pachorki. Back with Frawley. Final 20 seconds. Pachorki turns on the Jets, being hampered by Morell. Now doubled. Switched onto by Sabella. Final six seconds. This is Dupuy, the leading goal scorer. Threads it to the interior, but it goes nowhere. Stony Brook emerges, and that does it for the end of the first half. Retrievers eight, Seawold six. We've got plenty more content for you here at halftime on LAC Sports Network. Stick with us. Big time America East battle as we head to the break. A two goal advantage for UMBC here at Laval Stadium. We welcome you back to Laval Stadium on the campus of Stony Brook University. UMBC eight, Stony Brook six in a big time Conference clash, as noted off the top of the broadcast. Stony Brook at the start of the day in first place in the America East at six and one. That lone loss, of course, came at the hands of UMBC. The Retrievers can become the second team to punch their ticket to the AE tournament after Stony Brook with either a win today or a Binghamton University loss. This is the first time that these two teams have met twice in a regular season. Noted, Stony Brook's lone loss came against UMBC back on March the 6th. Back-to-back -back wins for the Retrievers, not just on March the 6th this season. Prior to that, got to go back to the 2019 AE playoffs when the fourth-seeded Retrievers at 4-8 and eight upset the top-seeded Seawolves right here at Laval Stadium. Little measure of redemption Stony Brook looking for for the last two games. And we told you Mike McCannell had a good quote at the beginning of the week talking about how Stony Brook had a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, looking for redemption, not just from the 2019 loss, but for the loss about a month and a half ago, which again was Stony Brook's longest Division I game. It took four overtimes to decide it. Nick Dupuy, the game-winning goal on the man up to give him a hat trick. In this game, two goals by Frawley, two goals by Galloway to lead the way for the eight-goal UMBC. Meanwhile, on the Stony Brook side, four of their six came from their top two scorers. Dylan Palanetti, two. Corey Vangenhoven, two. And we are just about ready to get you second half action from the North Shore of Long Island. This half, and potentially more, if we take a page from the March 6th book, this half could determine a lot towards the America East playoffs. Told you Stony Brook is already clinched. UMBC, good chance to clinch today, but the seeds are all up for grabs. 
Stony Brook right now the one, Vermont the two, UMBC the three, and U Albany the four. UMBC has beat both Stony Brook and Vermont as we headed to these final two games of the regular season. Stony Brook picking up where they left off in the faceoff X. It's their 12th win in 16 tries. But have not been able to take advantage on it each and every time. Wayne White possessing. Committed three turnovers, did Stony Brook in the first half, which might not seem like a big number. But when UMBC's for 28 plus minutes is zero, it plays a factor. Pretty clean first half from Ryan Moran's group. Here's Pickell. Tom Hahn, quickly to Wayne White. Hampered by Edwards. White, angled toward the center, spun right, and takes it to X. Here's Vangenhoven. Corey Vangenhoven, two goals in the first half. Takes a whack from Diallo. 15 seconds for Stony Brook. Tom Hahn, the veteran, out from behind the cage. Still Hahn grinding away. Can't find a lane. Tom Hahn lost it. Five on the timer. And Hahn stepped out of bounds. Not sure it would have meant much at that point with only four seconds showing on the timer. Spectacular individual man-on-man -man defense by the Retrievers. They had an opportunity at the end of the second quarter to make it a 9-6 game. They'll have that same opportunity here early in the third. A win today for the Retrievers would also put Ryan Moran above the 500 mark as their head man, currently sitting at 28 and 28. Head coaches have been steady in Baltimore County. He's just their third since 1971. They've had some good ones. Dick Watts, who led them to the 1980 Division II title. And Don Zimmerman, who brought them to six NCAA tournaments. Shot, Dupuy missed. Low into the right, Retriever's leading scorer this season. Had just one goal in the first quarter, rather in the first half. No new shot clock, 30 seconds and counting. Galloway tiptoed toward the cage, now takes a few steps back. This is Tupui. And again, Retriever's bench yells 20 to indicate to their offense how much time they have to work with. Galloway cocked and pulled. Shot never got to Palma. Out of bounds, Stony Brook possession. Some of that energy and momentum starting to come back to the Stony Brook bench. Both benches, as you can tell, on the bottom of your screen are on the near side here at Laval Stadium. Stony Brook on the left, UMBC on the right. McCannell jetting into the offensive third. Thought about the shot, dishes off Palinetti. And now the Seawolves settle in. A lot of goals early in the game, right out of the, right out of the gates. Nothing yet in the first three plus minutes of the second half. Defenses are tightening. Palinetti spinning, shooting, it's blocked. And the Retrievers attempt to clear. Bad pass. Danny Cassidy, first one there. Sprints across the Seawolves logo and another opportunity for Stony Brook. And there today is a rare miscue by UMBC. Keith Dukes, one of the defensive captains, really did the hard part and earning possession, and then looked to fling it about 40 yards downfield. It went awry. Almost four minutes into the quarter, still no goals. Anderson. Palinetti. Dylan Palinetti, interior feed, shot, saved. Lingner saves Kaschalk. Still 8-6 retrievers. The seventh save of the afternoon for Tommy Lingner. And a lot of green ahead for the Retrievers. Shot, count it. It's a hat trick for Ryan Frawley. The Retrievers take their largest lead of the day, 9-6. Frawley wide open on the doorstep. And credit the Retrievers, turning defense quickly into offense. It's the first goal of the second half. 
maybe more impressively today for Ryan Moran's group. Four for 16 at the faceoff X, but nine six in the goal department. Here's the 17th faceoff of the day, and a good one. Poma, the sophomore for UMBC. Deskowitz, the junior for Stony Brook. And Deskowitz emerges out of the chaos. Retreats into his defensive zone. Loud with a long stick. They announce Frawley's goal, his third of the game and 12th of the season. The captain has points in 34 consecutive games. Streak that started in 2019. Continued through the five game shortened 2020 season. And Frawley has picked up where he left off here in 2021 now. Grippy. Had his pass whacked out of the air. Tony Diallo again. Who has started each and every game since arriving on campus last year. Only five games in 2020 as noted. Back to work for Stony Brook. Piquel. Quick feet, circuitous route, comes back to the top. Here's DeMeo. One goal in the game, came in the first half. DeMeo hampered by Huff. Fell to a knee, got back up quickly. His pass sailed over Palinetti. Safely into the cross of Chris Hill. 15 seconds for Stony Brook. Vangenhoven kept it low, it stays out. Shot clock resets. Ball being fought for in the back 10. 2v2. Pair of white jerseys, pair of black. Stony Brook had won the possession and a quick timeout called by Anthony Gallardi. Timeout, Stony Brook. Taking another look at that sequence. Stony Brook won possession and Anthony Gallardi calling the quick timeout. So they will talk things over. 9.15 remaining in the third quarter. And the only goal so far, the one that just came moments ago for UMBC and Ryan Frawley, he now has a hat trick. We remind you that Hercules tires are meant to dig dirt, sling mud and pound pavement to get you safely to your destination. See why tires are right for you by visiting HerculesTires.com. Hercules tires, the official tire of the American East Conference, ride on our strength. Retrievers looking to repeat history from 2019. That would be hoisting an America East tournament trophy. But off to a much better start this time around. In 2019, they started the season three and eight before winning four quote unquote elimination games. That includes the win against Stony Brook in the AE tournament. They would defeat Marist in the NCAA tournament for their first NCAA tourney win in 10 plus years before falling to first seeded Penn State. This time around, they're five and two. A win today would go a long way. They'd be tied with Stony Brook at six and two, and they would own the tiebreaker with a pair of wins over Stony Brook. This is quite rare to see UMBC and Stony Brook meeting twice in a regular season. And by the time the campaign's all said and done, they could meet three times this year. Pickell. At X, Hahn bridges the gap to McCannell. Back-to-back -back career high six point efforts for McCannell, and he had no points in the first half. DeMeo, it didn't get there. Blocked down by the retriever defense, and a whole lot of green ahead for Tony Diallo. Stony Brook defense was scrambling. Now back in transition, they settle. Retrievers with plenty of time, making the necessary changes. 60 on the timer. Danny Cassidy doing the hard defending against Brett McIntyre. Dating back to the end of that 2019 season, and the title run by the Retrievers, they've won 14 of their last 18 games. Two of those four losses came this year. 8-7 OT loss against Binghamton. Shot, goal. Frawley's got four. Back-to-back -back tallies for the senior captain. And the Retrievers have their largest lead. It's now 
And you see this set up by Pachorki. Doing the dirty work at X behind the cage. And Frawley's got his 13th goal of the season. In the final game of the 2020 campaign, Frawley became the 35th retriever to 100 points in his UMBC career. Deskowitz the face-off win. Vang and Hope in the response. Just six seconds after the Frawley tally, Vangenhoven has himself a hat trick. And it's back to a three goal game. And you get a peek at the grad from Fort Mill, North Carolina, who has points in every game this season. As another hat trick, he's the beneficiary of some good hard work at the face-off X by Austin Deskowitz, which you are witnessing again. And a stalemate against Poma. And the sophomore Poma emerges. Tony Burko has started the game, scored by number 40, Corey Vangenhoven, assisted by number 11, Austin Deskowitz. So it is Vangenhoven from Deskowitz. Just six seconds after Frawley's fourth goal made it 10-6. Now it's 10-7. The face-off win by Poma. Just the fifth one today for UMBC. But again, it hasn't hampered them too badly in what is now a three-goal lead, seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. Doty. Being pushed by Wayne White, had to vacate the cage. Hall couldn't find an angle, was defended by Morell. Another Stony Brook senior. Final 20 seconds on the shot clock. The retrievers got to get something off. They do, and it's in. Brett McIntyre falling to the seat of his pants. It's a retriever's response. And back to a four-goal cushion. McIntyre was calling for it and was shoved to the turf by Wayne White as he was shooting. And it made no difference. McIntyre's first of this game. He had four of the 13 goals for UMBC back on March the 6th against Stony Brook. The Retrievers are just two goals away from matching their season high. Violation on UMBC. The whistle will give Stony Brook possession. With 6.30 to go, third quarter. Again, Stony Brook ranked 14th or 17th in the nation, depending on where you look, have already clinched their spot in the 2021 America East playoffs. Interior feed, Vangenhoven is shut down. Teddy Lingner, point blank range, keeps it a four goal game. New shot clock, Palanetti grinding away, can't find an angle, this is McCannell. Still scoreless today. Deposits on the far side, Anderson. Matt Anderson, lost it. Looked like he had just found enough space to let one loose. The ball bopped out of, his, out of his cross, and possession goes back to the Retrievers on the fifth Seawolves turnover of the afternoon. And chatting with head coach Anthony Gallardi heading into this game, he Certainly credited the Retrievers and tipped his cap to what UMBC was able to do on March the 6th. Said part of that was they were eating up time during their possessions, trying to utilize the whole 80. And they have done so today as well. Bohannon had a tough angle, went behind the cage. Now they reverse course at the far side, Galloway. Dugan hampering. Galloway for a bounce, it's Dupuis. A ball being fought for. Dupuy in a sea of white. Who will emerge? It is Tom Dugan. Playing in his 48th career game. The midfielder and captain. 
into and out of the offensive third. Stony Brook making the necessary changes on the fly. And now Corey Vangenhoven with it. Retrievers have scored three goals here in the third quarter. Just one tally for Stony Brook. Was an 8-6 game at halftime, now 11-7. Tom Hahn. Pakel rifles it in. A crank shot and a goal from Chris Pakel. His first of the afternoon, and it's back to a three goal game. Not many Seawolves playing better lacrosse than Chris Pakel during the six game winning streak. He had four goals in his first five games, now has 16 in his last seven plus. The grad from Bayport with 4.08 remaining in the third has Stony Brook's second goal of the quarter. We duel again at the Seawolves logo. Not a whole lot of movement between Poma and Deskowitz. Maybe exchanging pleasantries. Who knows? Stony Brook Morell, was scored by number the battle leads on. Batted into the offensive third offensive and recovered there by Petrorki. UMBC an opportunity. Palma kept it out. Mason Edwards had his first shot of the game. The sophomore from Virginia could not put it home. No harm done. Retrievers still possess. Plenty of time left in the game, 18 plus minutes, but time is on their side. No rush for Ryan Moran's group. Told you a bit of a homecoming of sorts for Ryan Moran, who grew up just a few minutes away from Stony Brook's campus. Attended Chaminade High School, where his father Jack been the coach there for 30 plus years. Forty on the timer. Hard shot by Hall, sails over the crossbar. Moran said his father used to drop him off right by the Stony Brook campus and he would just shoot on an empty net. Final 20 seconds on the shot clock. Frawley couldn't get it cleanly. Ball bounding toward midfield. Scooped up by the retrievers in the form of Steve Zichelli. Eight seconds. Zakelli pushed by Trenkel. Zakelli with five. Zakelli had it saved. Palma left his feet and elevated to make the stop. And it keeps it at a three goal game. Bangenhoven with three goals. Gives off to Hahn. One more Palinetti. Connor Grippy with speed. This is Palinetti. Fires off the post, back to Palinetti, who had it jarred free. What a sequence. I think Lingner had the first piece of that. Deflected off of him, then off the post, and immediately back to Palinetti, the original shooter. All for none, though, for Stony Brook. 90 seconds to go, third quarter. A 3-2 retriever's advantage in this third frame. It was late third quarter when the retrievers started to flip the script on March the 6th. Do the Seawolves have that in them today? Here at Laval Stadium. Galloway through a couple defenders. He finds Twine. Brendan Galloway navigates through traffic and extends the UMBC lead. It is a hat trick for the junior from Graysonville, Maryland. Let's take a look at his 14th goal of the season. Split two defenders and got the shot off in the nick of time with the long body of Danny Cassidy heading toward him. Stony Brook in the midst of their six game winning streak. 
the fewest number of goals they've scored is 12. And that will help Austin Deskowitz does it again. Individual effort from number 11. Back to a three goal game. Nobody in the America East has won more face-offs than Austin Deskowitz. Nobody in the America East has scooped more ground balls than Austin Deskowitz. He takes a face-off, scoops up the ground ball, and picks up the goal. It's a three-goal game, 65 seconds to go third quarter. No rest for the weary. Deskowitz right back to the center circle, grappling with Poma. Ball loose, loud after it. He's in a foot race against Edwards. And Loud's got it. Jimmy Morrell possesses. 40 seconds remaining for Stony Brook. Getting their personnel on the field. They try and make it a two goal game before we head to the fourth. Some of that momentum back on Stony Brook's side. Healthy crowd in attendance. Glad that we could see fans back here at Laval Stadium. Equally as happy, though, if you couldn't make it and you're tuning in at home on America East TV. McCannell cradling along the left. Vangenhoven. Palinetti scores. <laughs> Two goals in 40 seconds for Stony Brook. And with 16 seconds to go in the third quarter, it's a two-goal game. And it comes courtesy of the freshman phenom. The leading scorer in the America East has another hat trick. That's his 31st goal of the season. Well, you knew something good was coming when Dylan Palinetti in his Stony Brook debut had, yeah, just six goals. He's now scored in every game this season and has scored multiple goals in 11 of Stony Brook's 12 games this season. Speaking of 11, there is Austin Deskowitz. Might have been tripped. Battle lives on, and this will take us to the end of the third quarter. And now let's see, we've got a flag. This is after the whistle. We'll sort it all out, and we'll get it to you when we come back. Two goal game, UMBC 12, Stony Brook 10. 15 minutes remain in regulation here on Latin Sports Network. Twenty-fifth all-time meeting between Stony Brook and UMBC, and just like the most of the recent ones, it's a good one. 12-10 UMBC as we enter the fourth quarter. Back-to-back -back wins for the Retrievers in this series. That includes March the 6th, four-overtime win. It also includes the playoff game back in 2019, when the fourth-seeded Retrievers upset the top-seeded Stony Brook Seawolves, a series that started all the way back in 1997. We noted that this is the first time in the series that these two teams meet twice in the regular season. And they have not disappointed. There's a penalty at the end of the third quarter. And it's a minute penalty. It's on the Retrievers. It goes against the AE Defensive Player of the Week, Colin Kasner. So not only do they lose his services for the minute, he can't defend the man up. Vangenhoven missed the net. Tough angle shot from number 40, who has three of Stony Brook's 10 goals today, as does Dylan Palinetti. And fittingly, those two, the top two scorers in the America East. Forty seconds remaining on the advantage. Stony Brook second in the country on the man up this year, 43.2%. Interior feed, Hahn couldn't get the shot off. Now Palinetti. Shot, stayed out. Lingner able to get a boot on it. McCannell finds the loose ball. Stony Brook keeps possession. 15 seconds remaining on the man advantage. Palinetti at X. Across the way, Matt Tomeo. Stony Brook takes advantage of the man advantage. And on Matt Tomeo's second goal, it's a one goal game. 
Three straight goals by the Seawolves. And go figure, UMBC and Stony Brook are in a one goal game in the fourth quarter. Matt DeMeo averaging 3.24 goals per game in his college career. Checks in third best amongst active Division I NCAA players. Poma v. Deskowitz. Help arrives for the Retrievers in the form of Kasner, who just returned to the turf. Stony and out of the chaos, it's David Miliastrella. Stony Brook offense seems to have a bit of a hop in their step here in the fourth quarter. Slow out of the gates in the third quarter for Anthony Gallardi's group. Retrievers for a while owning that third frame, but a good finish by the Seawolves, and maybe an even better start to the fourth quarter. And a one goal contest, just over 13 minutes remaining in regulation. McCannell couldn't find the shooting lane. It's at X, Vangenhoven navigates through a pair of defenders. Shot, Lingner kept it out. Rebound fought for UMBC emerges. Corey Gaines first there to it. the opportunity to speak with both head coaches leading into this game. And quote from Ryan Moran, this is what you train all year for. A top tier America East matchup with playoff implications on the line. Oh, Dupuis had the feed. Frawley couldn't take it in cleanly. Stony Brook looks to complete the clear. Trankel. Cassidy leaping to make the snag. He's across midfield. And the Seawolves complete the clear. And they are into the offensive third. An opportunity to tie the game at 12 with 12 minutes remaining. Six ties in the game on March 6th. Six ties already today. On a Saturday afternoon at Laval Stadium, the penultimate game of the 2021 regular season. <clears throat> Wayne White. Bad pass intended for McCannell. UMBC is going to emerge. Seawolves trying to ride. But UMBC able to navigate through. You have a sense, even with 11 plus minutes remaining in this game, that the next goal really is a big one. That might, you might say, okay, that's pretty obvious, Johnny. But a 13 11 game is very different from a 12 12 game here in the fourth quarter. Ryan Frawley has four goals today, more than any other player on the turf. A pair of hat tricks, though, for Stony Brook from Vangenhoven and Palinetti. Jody grinding away. Drew the switch from Morell to Trankel. You'll hear the bench say 20 in a second. There it is. Behind the back shot, just missed on the far side from Frawley. That would have been one heck of a way to pick up his fifth goal of the game. Shot clock at 12 seconds on the restart. Doty jets for the near side, curls to the far side, finds an open man, the shot, it's in for the cross of Palma. Not sure if Hall got all of it, but on the bounce, Palma up to the task. Five minutes gone by in the fourth. Still a 12-11 game. If you're just joining us, Retrievers led 8-6 at the break. At their foot seemingly firmly on the gas pedal early on in the third quarter. Late goals, though, by Stony Brook in the third. 
really flip the script and the momentum heading into the fourth. Retrievers led 12-8. Seawolves in search of their fourth consecutive. Whips around the perimeter counterclockwise. Here's Pikel. Has one goal today, fakes the shot. At X Vangenhoven. Palanetti fakes, cranks, saved by Lingner. Rebound, score. Tom Hahn, Johnny on the spot. The initial shot came from Dylan Palanetti, and Tom Hahn, right place, right time, picks up the rebound and deposits home. Four consecutive goals by Stony Brook, and we start a new 9.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Well, stop me if this sounds familiar. 12-12 game, fourth quarter, Stony UMBC. The 165th point in the career of Tom Hahn. Poma quick from the faceoff X. His pass goes awry. Stony Brook takes over. Rare miscue. Fourth turnover the by the Retrievers. Announced as an unassisted goal for the captain, Tom Hahn, who sits alone in sixth place all time on the Stony Brook points list. Passed Matt Schultz earlier today with his first goal. Last weekend, big bounce back win for the Retrievers on their senior day. Stony Brook looking for a seventh consecutive win on their senior day. Lingner stops Mangenhoven. Driven shot right into the breadbasket. And an opportunity now for the Retrievers. Edwards took a whack. No harm done, cool comment collected. And now safely in the cross of Ryan Frawley, who is today's leading goal scorer with four. Stony Brook, the only America East team that has punched their ticket to the AE playoffs. Retrievers do so with a win today or with a Binghamton loss. Vermont, an opportunity to punch their ticket, need a win today. Same holds true for Albany, currently hosting NJIT. 30 seconds remaining on the timer for Ryan Moran's group. McIntyre putting on the moves far side, picked up by Trenkel. Dupuy, the team's leading scorer, hampered by Millie Estrella. Now 10 seconds for UMBC. Pachorki against Sabella. Pachorki tries the near side, shut down by Palma. Big defensive possession for Anthony Gallardi's group. And past the halfway marker in the fourth quarter, Stony Brook an opportunity to take the lead back. Chris Pakel getting up to bring it down. Stony Brook and UMBC almost matching awry passes for awry passes. Well, regulation was just not enough for these two teams back on March the 6th. Neither was one overtime, or two, or even three. Needed four before Nick Dupuy won the game on the man up. Will we need bonus cantos today at Laval Stadium? 12-12, over six minutes remaining. Piquel turns on the Jets, takes a shot. That might have got a piece of Lingner. Stony Brook retains possession. And the shot clock still showing 27 seconds. Would indicate to us that that missed Lingner. Legner has kept the Retrievers in this game. He's got 12 saves today. There's eight, five, nine goals, goals against average. Tops in the conference. Stony Brook on the doorstep and Legner right on cue. Point blank range and it stays at 12-12. All right, now 13 saves and none bigger than number 13. And back the other way we go, making the mass exodus at Laval Stadium. From left to right, Retrievers have a chance now.
Well, only fitting the Retrievers have not scored more than 13 goals in a game this season. They may need to do so here to pick up the win against Stony Brook. Seawolves, meanwhile, during their six game winning streak, have scored 96 goals. They are well into double digits each and every game. That included 22 last week against Binghamton. Bohannon being hampered, drew the brief double. Comes around to the near side, Galloway. He's already got three. Galloway shoots, Palma got a piece. Out of bounds at the far sideline. And because of the save, a brand new 80 for UMBC. And the Retrievers, like they did on March the 6th, the first time these teams met in the regular season, really good job of utilizing the shot clock. The longer we've got it, the less they've got it. And that sometimes is the winning formula against the high-powered Seawolves offense. Galloway finds top right corner. His fourth goal of the game has given the Retrievers the lead back. Brendan Galloway, who always seems to find the right pocket of the net when he fires away. 15th goal of the season. None bigger than that one. And for the third time this year, the Retrievers have scored 13 goals in a game. First time they did it was against Stony Brook. Deskowitz early movement will take a rare faceoff loss. That was the 27th faceoff. He's won 19 of them today. Now an opportunity for the Retrievers to pad their lead. And this next goal in the game might be the most important one. That would be goal number 26. Either the 14th for UMBC or the game tying 13th for Anthony Gallardi's group. Brett Boucher at X. Haven't called his name often today. Some fresh legs for Ryan Moran's group. They will utilize the shot clock again, which now dips below 40. Retrievers win. And they are in the four-team America East playoff. Pass in front, batted up in the air. McIntyre had the feed. And instead, Stony Brook emerges. Loud looking for a wide option, finds it in Vangenhoven. Jets toward the net near side. Vangenhoven shut down by Lingner. Another big save for the senior from Fort Salonga. Can they turn defense to offense? Miscue again. Brett McIntyre started moving before he caught it. Tom Dugan turns and finds a wide open Mili Estrella. A lot of room for the speedster. Four on five. Stony Brook waiting for the personnel. And smartly, Dylan Palanetti will pull out and hand off to Chris Pickell. Palanetti finds DeMeo in the far corner. 30 seconds on Stony Brook shot clock. DeMeo out in front and scores. Another individual effort goal. And we are tied again, 13-13, with 2.34 to go at Laval Stadium. Matt DeMeo becomes the third Seawolf with a hat trick today. Picks up his 23rd goal of the season. And he now cracks the top four in the conference. 13-13. 2.34 remaining. And the biggest faceoff of the season coming up for both teams. Deskowitz, V. Poma, the sophomore wins it. Tony Brook goal, his second of the game, scored by number eight. Retrievers Matt swiftly Tomeo. into the offensive third. The goal was unassisted. They cannot hold for the rest of the game. 
Less time remaining on the shot clock than on the game clock. They're separated by about a minute. So if the Retrievers want to win this game, they will need to score a season high in goals. More than 13. Dupuy behind the cage at X, shielded off by Sabella. Frawley has four goals. Galloway has four goals. And with 1.46 remaining, Ryan Moran Connor wants to talk Cole things over. UMBC. We'll keep it right here at Laval Stadium. Final 106 seconds of the regular season between the Retrievers and Seawolves. One week remaining on the America East slate. <laughs> we joke that this game, the biggest one of the season, that is, of course, until next week when Stony Brook goes to Vermont, cap the season there in Burlington, and the Retrievers will head to NJIT to take on the Highlanders. Here's what we've got at the start of the weekend. Stony Brook, the only team that has already punched their ticket to the AE dance, hence the asterisk to the right of their name. Vermont in second place, then UMBC in Albany. Top four will make it to the playoffs. Vermont can clinch with a win today. UMBC can clinch with a win today, and UAlbany, currently going at home against NJIT, can also clinch with a win today. So in a few hours, we may know which four teams are in the America East playoffs, but we won't know what seeds they will have. Final words from fifth year head coach Ryan Moran, who knows a thing or two about playing beat games on Long Island. Grew up on Long Island, attended Chaminade, where his father has coached for 30 plus years. Not to mention, coach this Retrievers team to one of their biggest program wins on Long Island back in 2019 in the America East Tournament when his fourth seeded Retrievers upset top seeded Stony Brook. They would go on to win the 2019 America East title. Strange to say, that's the last America East title. Started the season three and eight, rattled off four consecutive wins. Galloway's got four goals, but they'll go across the way to Dupuy. The Retrievers leading point scorer this season. Wide open shot, it's off the pipe. Ryan Frawley flirting with five, and it hit the far side post. What that does do is reset the shot clock and now the Retrievers could almost hold till the end of the game. Keep in mind it is 13-13, they do need to score. One ten on the game clock, 63 on the shot clock. So just a few seconds separating the two. You better believe the Retrievers will be patient over the next 30, 40 seconds. Jimmy Morell trying to keep up with Nick Dupuy. Interior feed, and the shot sells high and wide. That was Brett McIntyre. Maybe the look he wanted, but Jimmy Morell bopped him as he was shooting. Shot, shut down by Palma, hugging the near side post. Now no shot clock necessary. Shot, Palma's there again. Retrievers had 30 seconds to utilize, and Palma comes up with the biggest save of the game. The Seawolves an opportunity to take the lead. Here's Loud, Vangenhoven, Lingner stuck out the foot. Left cleat save by the senior. 12.8 remaining, and now Anthony Gallardi wants to talk things over. Timeout called by Stony Brook. Big save by Palma. Wonder, certainly a, a good look there for UMBC. But no shot clock. Could have had possession for the end of regulation. Instead, Stony Brook on the counter and Vagenhoven on the doorstep. Bit of a difficult angle. Misses at the far post. 12.8 remaining fourth quarter. As noted, these teams needed four extra frames back on March the 6th. 
13-12 retrievers win over the Seawolves, and that's still the lone loss in the conference season for Stony Brook. Palma stopped, by the way, his 10th save of the game. Lingner's stop was his 15th of the game. Here we go. Matt DeMeo will possess on the restart from the far corner. 10 seconds to work with in a tie game, 13-13. Vangenhoven searching. McCannell fires. Never got there. Retrievers try to hop on the loose ball, and time winds down. We are headed for overtime again. Stony Brook and UMBC 13-13 on Lack Sports Network. Stony Brook and UMBC meeting in the America East regular season. Needing overtime. No, this is not March the 6th. Instead, it's a Saturday afternoon at Laval Stadium on April the 24th. March the 6th, we needed four overtimes. A 13-12 UMBC win over Stony Brook. We'll see what's in store today on the North Shore of Long Island in a 13-13 contest. The Retrievers have matched their season high in goals with that 13 mark. Seawolves, meanwhile, the only team in the conference that has already clinched their spot in the AE playoffs. At six and one, the one, the loss to the Retrievers. A win today would extend their winning streak to seven games, be their longest since the 2011 season. Four minutes on the clock, sudden death, sudden victory, depends on your perspective. Either way, we're all set and ready to go. Austin Deskowitz against Alex Poma. 19 of the first 28 face-offs today have gone Stony Brook's way with the efforts of number 11. But face-off 29, the biggest. Help necessary on both sides. Retrievers got it. Mason Edwards emerges out of the chaos. And can the Retrievers do it again? Nick Dupuy was the hero last time. It was a hat trick and it came on the man up in the fourth overtime. Dupuis possesses now. Has just one goal today, but he has scored in every game this season. And UMBC, less than a minute timeout. into this overtime period, and will take a timeout. Right in the middle of the overtime. jersey or a black jersey. If it's a black jersey, it's a playoff clinching hero. If it's a white jersey, it's a winning streak extending hero. We resume just over three minutes remaining in the first overtime. Dupuy. Jimmy Morrell trying to keep up. Sends it behind the cage. Pachorki. 
25 on the timer. Galloway already with four. Low pass on the bounce received by Frawley. Frawley also with four goals. Had his fifth taken away by the pipe in the fourth quarter. Final 10 seconds on the timer. Galloway lost it. Ball is on the turf. And Stony Brook emerges. UMBC gets no shots on their first overtime possession. Stony Brook's turn, and they've got numbers. To the right, Palinetti able to receive. Took it in a triple team. And a smart, smart timeout taken by Anthony Gamardi in the midst of the chaos. Looked like Stony Brook had some numbers. The pass was altered en route to Palinetti. And once he possessed cleanly, it was timeout, Anthony Gallardi. Gallardi's first America East game as Stony Brook's head coach was that March 6th effort, the four overtime loss. He hasn't lost the game since. Now 13 and five in his America East career. As again, I'll show you some of the information from that first round, which took place in Baltimore County. The 13-12 final, Dupuy the winner in what was the longest game in SBU Division I history. Mike McCannell, number 92, front and center. Fresh off a pair of career nights. Six points against NJIT, followed up with six points against Binghamton. Today, he's been blanketed. DeMeo for Hahn. Tom Hahn. Centrally located, Chris Pickell. Most of the Seawolves on the turf right now in the offensive third, honored in a pregame ceremony for Senior Day. This would be one heck of a way for a senior send-off in their final regular season game at Laval Stadium. DeMeo puts on the moves at X, finds Vangenhoven. Vangenhoven grinding away, shooting and missing. Backed up by Stony Brook. Did not get a piece of Lingner, off net. Shot clock remains at 30. DeMeo restarts. Both Vangenhoven and DeMeo with hat tricks, they play in the back 10. Vangenhoven being shielded by Edwards. Gave it off, Pickell, Lingner's got it. Right into the cross. The 16th save of the evening for Lingner. 120 to go in overtime, number one. Palinetti took a bop at midfield. It was Galloway who maintained possession into the neutral zone. Retrievers, cool comment collected as we hit one minute remaining in overtime, 51 seconds on the shot clock. Retriever is content with bleeding down some of this clock. Shot. Palma got a piece with a stick. Taylor Bohannon in search of his first goal of the afternoon and almost had the game winner. Because Palma made the save, the shot clock resets. So for all intents and purposes, it's off right now with UMBC possessing. Dupuy had the game winner last time. Deposits, pass in front, and it's in. Ryan Frawley, it's a game winner. And for the second time this season, the Retrievers have topped the Seawolves in overtime. The fifth time's the charm for the senior captain. Ryan Frawley puts up a five spot. And UMBC defeats Stony Brook 14-13 in overtime. Ryan Frawley, assisted by number four, Brent McIntyre. The Seawolves six game winning streak comes to an end. And the Retrievers are now level pegging in the America East standings with the Stony Brook Seawolves each at six and two. Thank you for attending.
Well, senior day comes to an end, an inauspicious ending for the home team. But the Retrievers, with their biggest win of the season, they've beaten Stony Brook twice, and they've topped Vermont once. Your final from Laval Stadium, the Retrievers over the Seawold, your final 14-13 in overtime.